It's on, but it's, it's silent. Good, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Pazi Matila from uh, Ulu University in Finland. And Pazi is a senior researcher at the uh, Center for Internet Excellence, and he's doing research about uh, the classroom of the future, and he, as he will explain to you in this conference. And it's uh, a pleasure to welcome him for two weeks in uh, our promising project, because it is uh, an opportunity to have uh, many exchanges about uh, how Finland uh, deals with uh, education because, uh, as you may know, uh, Finland is uh, well known for um, outstanding programs in education and we have a lot to learn from uh, what they're doing uh, there. And so uh, today we have uh, different uh, people here in the audience, uh, our students in the Master of Management of Innovation, perhaps you have met them already. We have also other uh, master students uh, from the, the Master International Cognitive Visualis Visualization, <laughs> difficult to pronounce, uh, the master um, led by Professor Erika de Vries. She is sorry, but she couldn't be here today, but she asked her students to, to be very <coughs> active uh, in the discussion. And uh, I'm also very pleased to, to welcome uh, Jacques Renault and Olivier Gerbet. Uh, they just arrived from uh, Montréal, so as you can know, it's a very international meeting uh, tonight, so we are very pleased. And um, so you will uh, make your presentation for about uh, 40 minutes? 40, 45 minutes. 40, 45 minutes, and then we will have a discussion. And also, Betty will uh, explain to you something about the boîtier, I don't know how <laughs> So um, I'll let Betty explain that to you. Thank you. So I gave you some pictures. So Passy has three questions to, to ask you. So when the question will appear, I will start the, the questionnaire. And you just click on the, can I have the On the A, B, or C answer. And on the enter touch to validate and it's finished. Okay, so it's really easy. If you want to delete, it's the U touch, okay? And so it's really simple. So I think it's quite low tech technology compared to what Fazi will uh, show <laughs> us. <laughs> we'll see. But it's what we have here for, for the moment. So that's yours. <laughs> Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Bertil. Um, I met Erika uh, last week and she said that uh, her students will be there and that you are really clever. So I'm waiting for your oh, questions. Oh, I'm clever too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's, it's my pleasure to see all of you here this evening and um, I will have like 45 minutes or one hour presentation and then I hope that we will have a fruitful discussion and I will show you some techni technologies and some examples also later on. And uh, I don't know also about Finnish education system and our secret but somehow we've managed to get good results in education lately and it's always nice to tell about those but uh, I think uh, I've been honored or I've been glad to be able to develop innovative learning environments, technologies, learning solutions more than last 10 years and first study them uh, five or 10 years before. So within oh, almost 20 years I've followed the development in education technology and technology enhanced learning environments. And this is the topic I will talk uh, with you today or this evening and I hope uh, my voice is enough for uh, back row and this microphone is just for video recording but uh, and I, I hope my English or English is understandable as well so if you need perhaps somebody can tell at some points in, in France or explain if needed but but I think that English is enough so it, it all started already two years ago in Helsinki 
together with Valerie and a colleague of mine from Finland, Lena Arhippainen. Lena really loves uh, France and Grenoble area, so this is also the reason why I'm here, perhaps. But at that time we only had outdoor office. And I still think that my office is, is where I am and where's my technology, so I can establish an office wherever. I think. But uh, after that we've also moved inside and, and discussed about possibility how to develop uh, inside learning environment or classrooms and school environment further. And actually now we are establishing first pilot project around that topic and um, at the end of presentation I will shortly discuss about that as well. But it always takes time to start good connection and good networks. I think this two years is quite short amount of time. And I always I want to see concrete solution and I want to develop something concrete which is, which is visible. And that's why working together with people and in projects uh, I would like to see concrete solutions. Uh, Valerie also mentioned that I I come from Center for Internet Excellence, CIE, which is part of University of Oulu. But CIE is actually a research institute or research center on its own, owned by University of Oulu, City of Oulu, University of Applied Science, Nokia, Technopolis and some other companies. But uh, we are part of University of Oulu and do close cooperation with researchers there. We have programs to develop 3D internet, future internet and services around that. And also technology platforms. And in addition we have uh, human sci science or more user oriented programs which we called also living labs like all urban living labs test environments and infrastructure around it, how to involve test user communities into our activities. And my responsibility in CIE is technology enhanced learning environments and development of 3D virtual learning and training environments and, and solutions. And today we, we are roughly 20-25 people working and doing research in CIE. And in Tel area, uh, because it's, it's quite hard to, uh, to make the concept out of that, I usually speak about innovative pedagogy, architecture and designs in indoor and outdoor school environment and then 3D technology and 3D learning environments. We one together with students and school and, and also vocational and higher education examples. We want to try new results through our results. How we should develop learning environments further and create innovations in, in learning. But we are not doing that alone. We have our industry, so companies, researchers, and, and um, public sector, so users like City of Oulu working with us. We have some funding instruments and programs like uh, Horizon 2020 will be the next uh, uh, possible funding instrument for new projects. And then some multidisciplinary research collaboration. But that's shortly about my background. Now I promised Pertile to do that, but she said that my, my face is not that uh, ugly and I haven't practiced the, the right attitude. But uh, actually Clement asked me that why education innovation, innovation, so why this change is needed. So I described some of the reason and maybe at the end of presentation we can discuss what is your reason why we have to change the existing system. But we think that 
our school or university teaching uh, is not uh, updated at the moment. So if I'm as a talking head own all the information and you as a student you can find answer to all of your question by just putting one search word into your computer or collaborating with peers in, in uh, your institute or inside the institute or in global networks. So through teamwork you can uh, find right answers much easier than through me. And I, I checked what you did before the presentation starts. So you were playing games, you were searching information, searching for new shirts or watching pictures or, or using uh, some uh, community tools like Facebook or Twitter or WhatsApp. And that's the kind of modern world what we should inside universities and inside education to take benefit. And as well, my sons, which are eight and five years old, they are capable to do all that already. So why not to benefit that in education? And in that sense, we should change the working and operation culture in schools and cre create it more students or learner centered. But to do that, we have to open our eyes and develop physical and virtual learning environments and solutions, and also how to use ICT in education in best possible way. But that does, does not happen itself. Like we discussed yesterday that uh, uh, teachers, we are the hardest people to change or develop or transform our thinking and way of ways of working. And the other problem is that for us as a teachers, it's almost impossible, impossible to reach the management level or the head of the universities to have key or to have really uh, possibility to make difference. But still, I think that we should do it and we can develop it. And we should not wait order from our head or somebody else that you should change the situation. But we can also do ground to up innovation and start by small action inside our classrooms. But bigger change, it's made through strategic leadership. Education is social activity. And uh, I don't mind if we can bring some more well-being or motivation into our studies. It's just extra benefit. But sometimes it's good to think out of the box and your own activities and try to find new innovations for your education or for your teaching ways. And how to create those innovations? For that because we don't have this kind of television at our homes. You rather have this 55 inches uh, 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 co connected to internet, have Blu-ray, have uh, direct connection to internet and, and all the applications inside it like Netflix and some others. Uh, so kind of media is the same but application is totally different. So that's we, what we should try to find or try to develop in our school. Uh, it's a clever way to educate people and to, that teacher is your coach and helping you to reach best in your career and future work. And that is what we try to maintain, but how to do it and what is the application at the top of it. That is something what we can have an effect on and that is something what we should change. And for that we should look the f towards the future, but not very far to the future. Because we all know that technology changes very fastly 
So after five years, it, we don't know what's there. So that's why three to five years is enough. Not look today or the history, not that much. And we should focus to I generation. So you or even younger generation. Because at that time when they are working, the work possibilities and world is not going to be same than it used to be. They want to have more entrepreneurship activities, personal career or work possibilities. They don't want to work from 8 in the morning and 6 or 4 p.m. in the afternoon, but they want to have uh, possibilities to vary their working situations. They may wa want that working should be fun or nice or game-like and educative as well. And they don't want to be led as bureaucratic way that somebody is giving orders and they, then they just follow orders and do their job. And this is also one uh, uh, reason why we should change our schools and education system. But like I told you earlier, it needs very uh, like strong strategic leadership and vision from the organization. Leadership is in all values and attitudes and level in, in organization strategy. And it's guiding all the papers and all the activities you do inside the organization. So that's why you should have strong vision and goals. Put this innovation in, in strategic level in education. So that if leader like your Ministry of Education, for example, changed quite recently. It always takes some time for new people to, to start working properly. And it's always a, a kind of um, uh, also, uh, it, it short or no, it makes the process a bit harder. But when it's in strategic level, and in organization culture, it help, helps the process. And then it's easier to move to the implementation level. This is campus vision from uh, uh, University of Oulu and Linnanmaa campus. Unfortunately, it's only in Finnish, <laughs> but I will uh, give it to you to go around so you can have a look and it's very picturesque you so you will probably see some pictures. This is from um, um, kind of place management and space management side and then there's an another vision from um, learning strategies and development of social skills and this is an example of uh, another project called Meta Jemt. Uh, also run in, in CIE. So you can have a look when uh, if I don't have enough interesting pictures for you. But uh, who is originally our client or when we do this change work? It's you, it's, it's the either uh, primary school student or university student. So it, it's this small girl Marta. And what we try to achieve the object of education is to support student growth towards humanity and ethically responsible membership of society and to provide them with the knowledge and skills needed in life. And you know where is this written? It's in next curriculum in Finland which will be established in 2016. We have already now quite good and quite flexible curriculum in our schools, but it will be more innovative in, in two years. And that's why I, I told 
view that uh, I don't know about our education system, it brings good results now, but we also want to make our results better. And that's why I think that we have to develop learning environments and learning possibilities. And we have to try to move from teacher-centered, textbook-based, teaching-centered and subject-based learning towards learning-centered process based on learners' personal needs. So actually what we try to achieve is personalized learning environment and PLE. And that could well be one important part or, or topic in our future cooperation. So if you take a selfie from yourself and then put it in the middle and connect your tools what you are using and support you have in your education or technology you have in your education, you'll have your own personalized or own PLE quite easily. And in schools, how we work while defining or developing pedagogy. So we always access the current or assess the current situation, define the target situation and future situation. And when we know where we try to go, then it's easier to create the change. And it's, it's not just change in technology, what schools are using, but we need to do changes in teachership, in leadership, in in-service training and support services, technologies and physical infrastructure. And we have to change all these levels accordingly towards students' needs. And this is our kind of big picture. And it's easy to come to this development time after time. And most concrete solutions, what we can or you can move or make movement, is architecture solutions. How design your classroom, classrooms and learning environments. Or how to create your school or your university more um, like multi, uh, or multi purpose house or as well as community learning centers, so that schools could be open in evenings, weekends and summer times as well. And in technology, there's no role in technology if you cannot use it correctly. So if it in schools or institute, if it's fixed into ICT classroom, classrooms just. So that's why you, you have all your personal device, so bring your own device is good, uh, good topic in, in that sense. But what we also try to develop is mobile device, mobile learning, virtual worlds, and in future also game-like and gamification-like learning environments. And I, I hope that I can give you some examples during this session and then we can discuss about those. So what we try to develop is physical world and physical learning environments and virtual worlds and, and digital uh, learning environments and solutions and technologies. And again, you as a user, you are in the middle and you define and our students or our pilot groups should define how we do that development work. And that's also part of Living Lab ideas in, in all labs. And now maybe the most important message. So what we try to change. As a teachers, we have to change our habits. And that's why we have to go to classroom level and change learning environments there. Because it has remained too long too similar. And this is an example from Finland, how we have developed our classrooms since decades. So 
So perhaps you can see some movement towards PLE, so personalized learning environments. I'm not sure. <coughs> and all the pictures are quite gray as well. So the message is that from traditional classrooms, we should go towards active classrooms. Where you or teacher or you as a student, you have possibility to uh, easily modify, modify your own learning environment and solutions you use. And also technology, what you use. So we have school and classroom learning environment or campus learning environment. And it should work as multi-purpose house. On the other hand, we have the neighborhood or surrounding around us. We have city or national infrastructure and then we have global world. And the meaning of university or building is that here you have um, helpers or mentors or coaches who helps you to create your best in your studies and education. But otherwise you have technology and through technology you can connect yourself into global education and you will have virtual coaches or in, um, intelligent agents to give you the best possible learning tasks and, and solutions. But inside here you can perhaps see already some PLEs or personalized learning environment and solutions what you want to use. So somehow we are moving between physical and virtual world, local and global experience, formal and informal learning and also non-formal learning. While in traditional school system we only recognized this formal learning point of view and integrated and distributed learning tasks. This is from InnoSchool project, one, one nationwide project run in Finland, how they defined uh, different learning uh, dimensions. But Marta, or you as a student, you shouldn't think of technology, what you are using. You should think the problem you are facing or uh, task that you are solving or authentic learning situation from uh, um, the world. And then you should collect technology or use best possible technology that you have to help to solve your tasks. And in Finland, in schools, we are going towards inquiry-based learning and phenomenon-based learning. So you have actual phenomenons like, for example, EU is a phenomenon. Then you have strategy, you have legislation, you have languages, you have currency, and you can select one area what you are focusing. And then when you are selecting another area, uh, you can together uh, together build your task or do interaction and collaboration between you and make the phenomenon even stronger from your uh, current task point of view. Okay, and now to this uh, interactive session. Maybe we can, can we turn off some lights so no. it's everything will. <laughs> so, uh, in which of the following learning environments you would rather work or study? Are you ready? Yeah. So, this is a solution. This is B solution. And this is C solution. So, A, B, 
or C. And there's no right and wrong answer, so you don't have to look the neighbor or <laughs> what anybody else are <laughs> answering. So A, B or C. And uh, because of those clickers, we will have instant feedback as well rather soon. Uh, so how is this working? Is this the how many have already answered? Yeah. So Clement, you should press your button. Okay, now we have all the answers. So A answer, only 6% out of you uh, would have selected this A solution. Is it the last one? But I think that this is the right, isn't it? Sorry. No, the problem. Yeah, it's working well. And then B solution. 35% of you select this one. But uh, guess what? The most of Finnish teachers, they would select this one. And the tendency is going from A to B solution in our classrooms. And nowadays, almost all new classrooms, they would select this B one. And it's, it's really going fast into reality in, in our classrooms. And then C, most of you are ready to go towards this kind of future-oriented learning environments and learning solutions, which are most flexible and most movable, but not the teachers. And this uh, N is primary school, secondary school, high school, university teachers and leaders as well. It, this has made in, in uh, Educa Fair in the end of January and those are the biggest education fairs in Finland yearly. Okay, are you ready? So let's have a, sec a second question. Which of the following spaces is most comfortable? A, you don't have to touch it right now, you can see the, all the answers. B, or C. Okay, if you want to see them again, A, B or C. What is the most comfortable corridor environment? Okay, here we have the answers. Uh, in Finland, 22% they select A, while it was 16 here. B solution, 30% and 22% here. And then C, 148 and in, in among you it was 63. So uh, quite uh, similar results, I would say. And I think that in corridors or in other learning environments we are ready to move more innovative solutions or towards more innovative learning environments or even um, different type of solutions or most colorful and comfortable solutions. Okay, and the last one, maybe the hardest one. What of the following options do you think is the most inspiring learning space or learning environment? Will it be A? 
B or C. And while you are answering, I can take it again. A, B, or C. One more. Okay, we have all the answers. And uh, if we go to results, uh, most of you, like 66%, select this A solutions, and half of our teachers would have done the same. Then B, yes, 3% here, 15 in Finland. But I still think that there are two or three people at my, my age here in the audience who perhaps select these ones. Because when we used to went to school, we have good memories or good feelings from our schools. And it's, it's perhaps one reason why we try to keep or remain it, it a bit similar or quite the same. And 35%, so quite close to your answer, select this C one. Okay, thank you. And in that sense, this, is, or this clicker is also quite handy tool to get instant feedback and resol results. But um, uh, somehow it should be inside your mobile phone or, or made as an application so that it, it, it would be easier to use or would not uh, demand any extra technologies or solutions. So, what we try to create while changing our learning environments, we try to make it more comfortable, more relaxing, more colorful, more cozy, more home-like and movable learning environment. And still, this is uh, from like five or six year old project and I still like most this picture, mostly this picture, what we call active classroom. And among times or during this last decade, we have developed our homes quite radically, but not our learning environments or not our school environments. Not yet. I know that you have promising classroom and future classroom and there's uh, motivating colors and really comfortable chairs, but still we have much, much more to be achieved. And in architecture or in technology point of view, when you need new school building or new campus area or learning place, as a headmaster or as a teacher, you usually you have pictures like this and then you have to do decisions or um, find answers what kind of premises you would look you or you would need in your education or studies. So I can say in my experience that with this architecture table or floor or floor plan, I'm not able to do those decisions. I'm maybe able to give some feedback, but not all the decisions. Maybe my wife is able to give feedback in furniture or in colors or in, in some uh, overlapping elements. But what if you would see your coming school or your coming environment in 3D, in one-to-one -one sites? It's much easier to do decisions. Like one headmaster who is planning the latest school in city of Oulu, he said that they had um, like two or three months, they had changed emails how to furnish their physic and chemistry laboratory. So if they would have had this kind of tool, they would have immediately said that, okay, there we would put this table 
there's this um, kind of uh, instruments and reagents and this is what we want to have. And we now we are already able, but what's the trend in Finland? We build this kind of cave environments where we can see those results in one to one sites. And it's even more uh, easier for us as end users to take part of the planning process. And that's why we call this participatory planning process and where we use 3D technology and, and, and those tools or visualizations when creating new learning solutions or environments. And this is how the environment actually looks like. But when we have used this space for participatory planning, then the next big hit is to use it as distance learning environment. Because you have done all the modeling work, you have to make it a bit more roomier and more comfortable for users. But then you can utilize it as your own learning environment. You can invite your peers all over the world to come to your school and have learning situations there or talking situation there. And this is really made for multi-user social collaboration platform. And in this 3D environment, you have voice chat and text chat, what you can use. And then avatar is representing you as a user. And as far or as long as I have used these environments, and ACP, so Adobe Connect Pro or Skype in voice communication tools, the biggest difference is the avatar because it represents us. And we, when we walk or when we fly in virtual world, we can collect uh, or, or uh, gather around one table and have discussion like in real life. Or we can go in front of one screen and have uh, interactive learning situation there. So what we... Um, last autumn I used quite a lot of time to develop this and the kind of development work has gone, gone through for six or seven years so far. But in two last years it's, we have been able to make some movement. So at the moment we have well working technology and hosting environment. We have 3D infrastructure. So tools how you can from library bring object like these cells drag and drop those to environment or tables or chairs and decorate your own uh, 3D virtual learning environment. And what we are creating at the moment is tools that you could as easily as I showed those television in the beginning, sit in your home sofa and just uh, pressing your remote control and change the content in virtual world walls. And we have basic tools working, but we still know that there's a lot of development work that what we have to do. And when we have all these three layers, then we can create or we can create content or courses or games, what we call also sub games into this environment. And this is how our virtual school looks like. And it's not by accident that it looks like traditional school environment. While you all know that in virtual world you ha we have all possibilities to do whatever. But I still think that we have a long history from learning environments and schools. So we exactly we know how to use that space for education purposes. So it's good starting point and then perhaps in coming years we can develop something really innovative and really new. But the main thing is that when we sit around the table in virtual world, we have our papers, we have our tablets, we have our 3D books or digital books as we have those in, in real world. 
so we just can press the remote control and have shared uh, Wikipedia page where we can write memo together with us. So it, remotely we can work with the same document and have voice connection and feedback. But the idea to use this because beside corridors there are several classrooms is not by classroom and classroom but as project working space. So there will be eight or nine project working space where you can go within one classroom like 30 pupils and then divide uh, and take one space for each group and divide and modify those spaces as you want and then utilize those in, in learning purposes and also bring interactive technology into virtual world. And other examples, this is one environment for vocational education and uh, they are starting new education program to, uh, to educate hotel officers. So we made hotel booking system, small shop and info services. So there's a city map and you can actually, um, if client is coming from France or Italy or States, they can, um, they can orienteer the client in, in city of Oulu beforehand. And we also did for that environment some uh, feedback or place where teacher and student or group of students can share the learning situation, what they just learn inside the hotel together and reflect what they have learned. I know that it would be good to have video from this learning situation like today we have video about this presentation so that we could go back and think that this was the hard customer for you and how you handle that situation. The other uh, for sure really raising area <coughs> is simulations and in one vocational education unit in southern part of Finland we create demo how to manipulate or how to repair this harvester machine before drive, after drive and yearly renovation. Not actually simulation how to drive it because there are simulation games enough in the market but real situation. And also like we've discussed that in physical chemistry or in laboratories, for example, it would be a good tool for universities to use. And um, uh, uh, last uh, project proposal for EU projects uh, uh, were in April and we had a good network to create an application for remote laboratories in virtual worlds, but it was too soon. So, some other time. So, is it your living room? Is it city environment or educational environment? The virtual world is much more flexible to build whatever. But it's, it's too far away from physical classrooms still. So we need some time, we need some good pilot cases and examples to develop it further. But if we think the ICT in education, we should have a look to C letter in the middle. So critical thinking, communication, collaboration and creativity. I had a group of visitors from Boston, Massachusetts last, last autumn and one uh, uh, visitor among them was Ken Kay, who is the one of the best American expert in 21st century learning. You can find his work from internet easily. But they were looking solutions inside classroom which are using four C's. And the other big issue was global competence. So we are just not learning for local uh, business opportunities or local um, work position but for global world. And in technology point of view, we have had quite long tradition of different technologies and environment. As I also mentioned that I've been follow, following this for 20 years. 
and uh, trying to even to make my implications or or new solution during last 10 years. So we have had internet e-learning platforms, now we have mobile learning and social media tools. But uh, coming emer emerging technologies are 3D worlds, cave environments, augmented mixed reality, and perhaps some of you have already tried this Oculus Rift classes. Because this virtual world which I showed you, it, it works one-to-one -one in Oculus Script classes as well. And, um, and, and uh, during last year, years I have had possibility to follow this development really closely because I've been one of the academic leader in immersive education uh, Europe association or initiative. It, it's actually started from Boston, there are some chapters in, in states. We established Immersive Education Europe and now uh, it's global organization but now we are trying to create uh, something which really works globally and share how to share these ideas. So we develop innovative physical learning environment through mobile device you can see more in augmented mixed reality and through avatar you can lock yourself into virtual school or virtual university or virtual learning and training environments. And in our last conference in London last November, the future logist from Intel actually pointed out that if you think the technology in decades how it has developed. It, it has almost vanished among us. And actually I, if I would draw this slide I would put more people here. Because the main idea how to use technology is together with people and, and in communication. So you just have to define are you developing basic school uh, developer school, innovative school and future school. And when you decide where you want to go, you have to understand that it will perhaps take two or three years to see the first results. Because world and especially school environment does not change very rapidly. And uh, we have tried to do this more than 10 years, so we have also already some stories to tell you about pedagogy, how to develop uh, or how to have, uh, what kind of workshops to have and pilot projects and how to do it in larger in countries or areas, what kind of courses uh, students want to have, how to develop physical environment or, te or advanced technologies. And in CIE, like I mentioned in the beginning, living labs and pilots are one essential part because the earlier we see results in real life, the better. Why? Because all of us, we want best start for our children or we want to create best possible learning environments to support our professional development and competence development. So that's we should put focus as well uh, develop, to the development of learning solutions and environments. And ultimate outcome is 21st century adult. We don't want 21st century student being taught by 20th century teachers in 19th century classrooms. And uh, before I let you to ask questions or argue or discussion, I would like to show some uh, case examples and some pilot cases still. So case one, the headmaster had the problem. He had old gymnastic hall which was, used an, uh, which was used three times per year because it, they have multiple uh, floors and this was one was in upper floor and they have another gym hall in, in basement. So what we did together 
uh, with pedagogical and, and uh, architectural and technical experts, we defined a plan how to change the existing physical environment. And actually, uh, it was empty environment before, but we developed and the institute developed three different sites of tent environments, one barn house and then one this kind of virtual world or wall to be utilized there. And the actual solution were that in space A, which was called living room, it's meant for 30 to 40 participants. So we could have this session in this uh, big um, like a fest tent as well. Space B is called Cradle of Creativity. So it, it was meant really as a place to create innovative solutions. And because this was kind of low budget project and we did not have any um, Microsoft Surface or technology or, or uh, other uh, manufacturers interactive tables. So there's a glass table and it's possible to create plans or mind maps uh, into this table. Then space C is business forum for five, five to ten participants and this is meant for teamwork. And the whole idea to develop this space was their entrepreneurship studies. Because the space D is warehouse and it uh, was going to be or it was meant to be for bureaucratics or for administrative issues. And I don't know in, in France should it be bigger or smaller that tent. But uh, we think in Finland that less bureaucracy is good and it, it gives more flexibility and time for other issues and development issues as well. And, uh, but this was meant for regulation and personalized practice spot. And then in addition there were campfire, so at the end of situation sit down together and have discussion and, and really do development together. And this virtual space for presentation and remote participants to collaborate the, the activities. And overall it does look like this. And I tend to think that this is kind of innovative physical space and ideas and then in front of the uh, environment we have this virtual wall which is constantly moving like a speaker's corner in London perhaps. So you can moderate uh, according to your needs. And those spaces are located so that and there, there are even signs how to move there. So bureaucratic is there and then entrepreneur space is here, big tent and then wall uh, are in, in front of the, of the space and actually right hand side in this picture. So this example from uh, vocational education and the other one from higher education which is called as Lee Forum and this is as part of CIE research infrastructure as well. And Lee Forum is coming from Learning and Interaction Observation Forum. And this is home place for eudaimonia. And actually 15 research groups inside University of Oulu where they can collaborate and research learning and training solutions and have conferences and seminars. Actually part of that these research facilities are this forum, then learn lab uh, made for psychological studies. Uh, uh, I will tell you later uh, one practical example. Then early childhood education center, so actually kindergarten inside the university where uh, researchers uh, have possibility to research children in real life and then Ubico as part of teacher education school in city of Oulu. And uh, this is the right hand side is CIE area and this left hand side uh, 
plea forum area. So this gives us a good possibility in the future to do education and technology or education technology research together. And both sides there are some uh, uh, informal lobby areas. And this is the uh, floor plan from Lee Forum space. And actually what you can see there again is three classrooms. But there's interactive uh, wall, uh, walls or movable walls, so you can open all space throughout. And why it was make, made like three classrooms is because of this uh, research infrastructure there's inside. And it's quite nice when you open this cafeteria space and learning environment space together to have uh, uh, learning, kind of open learning area as well. And here you can see the overall when, when it's open the area and then there's three interactive boards where you can uh, uh, show your presentation. And as part of research infrastructure is more more equipment. And um, this more development we started in one of our projects like uh, five or six years ago. So it's multimodal analysis equipment. You can have eye, move, eye movements, speed prosodic and heart rate meters in the same timeline. So if there's a uh, group of 25 students, for example, and all they have headsets, you can just mute all the other microphones and have teacher and one student reflection or have two students interaction. And because they are all in the same timeline, you can get back into this particular learning situation and did then develop it, it, it more deeply. And then there are some touchable tables, interactive tables, and this is actually the creativity corner or service design corner, which is again low-level cave type of environment. It's a back uh, side projected space with uh, some voice activities and how they use it is for example for enterprises or business units so then like um, like a medicine store so they can have the, their selves here and uh, together with researchers they can research usability in that space and this is um, CIE space environment again cave environment and how we use it. For example, this Kitsi Island is uh, one UNESCO World Heritage Sites located in Petroskoi. And uh, from internet, for example, you can see video about this modelization work. And it's one to one site, so when I'm with my virtual avatar here and colleague Kari Autio is in real life, so in future we can have interactive learning session together. And at the moment we have three this type of cave environments in all area and next thing will be to connect all these caves together. So a group of uh, a research group can sit in one cave environment and have communication with another. And also in participatory planning expert can perhaps uh, furnish a learning environment for us and we can sit there and see the results in real life. And uh, these are just examples what kind of content we can create for our cave environments. We have classrooms and school environments, meeting room, vocational higher education environment, outside environments and city environments and public spaces. And at the end, shortly, idea about this Cluffy project so classroom of the future and innovativeness in teaching innovations in French and Finnish institutions. So as we call this Cluffy, but why I'm here 
in, during these two weeks is that uh, we try to or we will make an implementation about this in coming autumn and uh, we have uh, one uh, student or one worker in Finland to divide this project and now we will uh, uh, develop together the whole project and also your sides of the project and there will be in A level will be Finnish and French classroom, traditional classroom, innovative classroom and comparison of this, how those groups are working. Then somehow we want to mix those groups through technology to develop their work perhaps further. And at the third point we try to make one project so that there are no any Finnish or no any French classroom but students or perhaps you have possibility to work together maybe through virtual world or some other learning technologies. Okay, this was it in short.